Life can get busy, but keeping up with daily dust and dirt doesn't have to slow you down. With the Roomba 600 series vacuuming robot from iRobot, it doesn't have to. You don't even need to be at home to do the cleaning. The iRobot Home app allows you to clean and schedule on the go. Just press clean and the robot goes to work. Navigating around your home to find dust and dirt wherever they hide. Cleaning along walls and sweeping dirt from edges and corners. The Roomba vacuuming robot moves easily from hard floors to carpet and over thresholds. It cleans under furniture, around clutter, and avoids stairs and other drop-offs. The patented three-stage cleaning system loosens, lifts, and suctions dirt, dust, and even large debris. The Roomba 600 series cleans for up to 60 minutes, then automatically returns to the home base charging station, so it's always ready to clean. You can schedule the robot to vacuum every day of the week. And with the iRobot Home app, you can connect to clean from anywhere, anytime. Let the Roomba 600 series help with the vacuuming, so you're free to handle everything else life throws your way. You and iRobot, better together. Got all kind of dirt. <laughs> all right, I just wanted to highlight some of the cool features about the Roomba. First, you can actually set the day, hour, and minute. And this actually helps you with the scheduling. And so once you have the clock scheduled, you can run this Roomba at the same time every day. And I promise if you do that, you will have clean floors. It's wonderful. It's like a housekeeper that works for you and you don't have to worry about it. So the Roomba also features this, this is where the, the dirt goes, the tray. And you might think if you have a really high shedding dog that this tray is just not enough. That was certainly what I thought when I got the Roomba, but if you actually keep up on it, the tray is just fine. You just have to remember to empty it every day. So one thing to remember too, and one reason I don't schedule the Roomba is because our dog loves toys. As you can see, he's already actually working on one. And so it always requires us to kind of go through our rooms and pick up these toys. And our dog doesn't allow his toys to be put away for very long. So it's best to just go around, pick up toys, and then run the Roomba. Another thing that we have to work on is remembering to pick up his dog dishes. Um, the Roomba does tend to splash the water around and take off with the, the food and water dishes, which can kind of make a mess. So we also pick those things up. And we also move some chairs out 
to allow that dog hair to get out from under our kitchen table. So to start the Roomba, you just simply hit the clean button twice and it will take off. So one of the only downsides that I've found with the Roomba is that it loves cords and it will find itself in all these cords. And I've actually had it get caught in the cord and take my laptop down with it. And so you want to be really careful to keep, get those cords put away and make sure that it's not going to get caught on anything or else you might come home and not be very happy. So this right here, this is the iRobot Roomba. You can control it by pressing the clean and it will clean the room. It maps out the room. It's a really great feature. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. There's also a schedule button to where you can schedule to clean your house up to one time per day, seven days a week. Uh, you do that by setting the clock first. And then there's also this nice spot feature, which will clean a spot or area that you place this Roomba down in. It'll clean just that area and avoid doing the entire room. Now, the one beauty with the iRobot Roomba is that it has a dock, okay? So when it's done cleaning, it will automatically try to find the dock to go back and charge. It's a pretty cool feature. Or if you decide yourself that the Roomba is done cleaning, you can press the dock feature yourself and the Roomba will go back to the dock. Pretty nice feature because sometimes you think that a room is clean and you don't want it to clean anymore. You press that and it'll go back to the, to the, to the dock. All right. So like with the Roomba, it comes this nice handle for picking up. I mean, it's not the best handle, but it does allow you to pick it up. Let's see the underbelly of the Roomba and we'll talk about like how it cleans up. OK, so with the underbelly of the Roomba right here, you have very, you have a couple of features. You have a brush right here, which helps sweep up the debris as well as a rubber sweeper. All right. And then you have this this sweeper right here it kind of gets the edges actually it really does get the edges and all the dirt on the edges and sweeps it right into the um into the area to be swept up and then there's also this container right here this is the dustbin that collects it i'm going to go ahead and show you that all right so i'm going to take this off to get to the dustbin the dust actually collects within this compartment right here and then there is a filter with inside right here this right here i mean it's, it's not a helping filter but it does prevent the dust from coming back out at you and back onto the floor and you just simply clean those out in my place i generally have to clean it out once maybe a week if you have a really dirty place you might have to uh, empty it out pretty often but after you're done you just simply uh close it back snap it into place and then plug it back into the back and you're all set the Roomba comes with a neat feature for spot cleaning I decided to test that out in my kitchen by spilling a few things around the kitchen, hopefully things dogs aren't interested in, but I started with some flour and then brought in the Roomba to test out its spot cleaning ability. So you can see how the Roomba works. He basically starts in a series of smaller and then ever growing circles until hopefully everything is swept up. Well, this worked pretty well for me for the flower, I do have some deeper gouges in my grout lines and the Roomba just didn't have the suction power to get down deep into them. So picking up the flower was pretty easy for the Roomba. I decided to get a little more heavy duty and see how the robot would do. Grabbed some oatmeal, some cornflake crumbs, as well as some peanuts and sprinkled them on the floor to see how well the Roomba would do at cleaning up bigger messes. I was a little skeptical about this test. I wasn't sure the small vacuum could actually handle this kind of a spill. After the first couple passes, it seemed like the robot was kind of just rolling over top of the peanuts and the oatmeal. But after a few more sweeps, he started picking up just about everything in his path. After just one spot clean cycle, you can see how well the Roomba did. There were just a few stray odds and ends in those deeper grout gouges I was talking about. Otherwise, the whole surface of the floor was swept and I was pretty impressed. While I would like it if there was a bit more suction power to the vacuum to get into those deeper areas, it's not the robot's fault I have crappy grout.
No rats. Alexa, ask Roomba to start cleaning. Okay, Roomba has started cleaning. Maybe you're looking for dirt. <laughs> <laughs> 